and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host. And this week I am wrapping up talking about resistance. Resistance is the idea that there's something that we want or something we want to be, but we don't really want to do the work or do the hard stuff to get it. So we make up excuses and stories and complain and we don't get there. This week, I'm sharing with you one of my favorite people, Kelly Covert. Kelly is an inner voice coach and the host of a podcast called In Her Voice. The reason Kelly is such a great example for you this week is she learned how to overcome resistance. Kelly is one of these multi-passionate women. She's a multi-potentialite, and she's going to tell you all about that in our interview. There's a lot of things that she's really good at. And she was struggling to kind of merge them all together and put herself in one container. And when she finally stopped the resistance against being all the things that she is, her life completely changed and opened up. And she's just such a beautiful example of someone who just feels really comfortable in her skin and comfortable with what she's doing and who she is. So I really want to introduce you to her. You'll hear in the podcast a whole bunch of things that she's interested in and how she does them and how she overcomes perfection and shooting all over herself. So check out this interview and I'll see you on the other side when we check in and hear about what's coming up next for next month. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If you've been following along, you know that I am interviewing creative women and men who have made a leap. They had a job or a something that they wanted to make a leap from to something else that they wanted to achieve. Most of these people have a burning desire inside of them, a goal, a business, a book, a podcast. And so I wanted to introduce you today to my friend and colleague, Kelly Covert. Kelly is an inner voice coach, and she's also the host of the In Her Voice podcast, and I highly recommend you check that out, but later on we'll talk about that. But I want you to talk to Kelly, because she and I, we mastermind a lot together. We, we bounce ideas off of, a lot, off of each other a lot. We like to have, uh, I like to have chai latte with Kelly. And um, I wanted you to meet her, because I think that she can really inspire you to help you make the leap and get whatever's inside of you out into the world. So please welcome Kelly Covert. Kelly, thank you for giving me your time today. Oh, thank you, Jen. And I would like to take credit for introducing you to a chai latte you for totally everyone. You deserve credit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back from having some chai latte too. So. Fantastic. Yeah, that's all me. <laughs> Kelly, can you get us started today by telling your story a little bit about where you were and what the drive was that, was, that forced you to kind of make a leap? Mm -hmm. I feel like for me, um, maybe leap is not exactly the right word. It's been more of this very long, teeny tiny step after teeny tiny step Mm -hmm. of evolving and of coming to know more about who I am and about why I'm here, like why I'm walking the earth. And I think that that's a process that we all go through as we gain in wisdom and years and experience. And so for me, that's definitely been the case. And I've always been someone who felt strongly called to support people, Mm -hmm. um, to encourage people, to remind people what they have inside of them. Mm -hmm. And for me, that began as a flute teacher. I'm a professional musician. I have degrees, advanced degrees in music. And that's sort of what I went to school for. And I still do that, by the way. I think that's important to note. So I didn't leap from one thing to the other. But Mm -hmm. as I did that more and more, I started to realized the thing I like most about teaching flute 
is reminding my students that they have everything that they need, mm -hmm. you know, that it's all there for them and that yes, it requires hard work and that yes, it requires practicing, but more than all of that, it requires believing that you can do it. And that's true of everything. And then, you know, I found myself running in, you know, little 5Ks and then longer races. And then I started doing triathlon and I was like, oh, this is really great. I can train people how to do this. And again, what I was doing was I was teaching people how to believe that they could do something. Mm -hmm. And it just was a different form of that. So all my life, I feel like I've been coming to this place where that's really what I want to do. I want to teach people and particularly women, like that's who I feel really called to work with, that you have what it takes. You have to believe that you have it. You have to trust that inner voice to guide you in the way that you're supposed to go. Even though everything from outside often tells you you're doing it wrong or that you need to do it different or you should do it this way. It's really about connecting inside and believing that you are worthy now and that you have everything that you need to do what you want to do. So that is exactly what I'm doing now for women. Mm -hmm. So it's been this evolution of understanding and honing in, if you will, of what my purpose on earth has been. Well, I love that you are very open about the fact that it wasn't a leap. And actually, you know, this is making me think about how many times I've done these interviews. It's, it's actually never a leap, right? Like we take little baby steps and it looks like a leap to everybody else. You know, people, people will look at what you're doing on social media maybe. And they're like, oh, well, overnight she's done X, Y, and Z. Oh, Kelly wanted to do a podcast. And overnight she's got this very successful podcast. And it looks to the outside world like you've made a leap. But you, you're really talking about it being a crawl sometimes. Oh my gosh. And sometimes going backwards, <laughs> yes. forward and like failing and trying one thing and, and thinking that that's going to be the thing and realizing, no, it's not quite the thing. And really understanding that there's so much grace for us to evolve in such a way. I don't believe in overnight success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of me wants to, like, if I'm being really transparent, part of me wants to believe that, like, I will just get discovered one day <laughs> and it's all going to happen like, bam. bam. Yes. I you want know. to believe that, yes. but honestly, I don't think that it happens. I think that there's a lot of hard work. I think there's a lot of soul searching. There's mm -hmm. a lot of listening. There's a lot of trying, mm -hmm. failing and trying again. And the leap part is really more, I mean, we talk about take, having a leap of faith, right? That's the leap. The leap is the thing that nobody ever sees. Right. The leap is not the action, right? The leap comes in the believing. That you can. Believing yeah, that it's possible. 100%. And then just believing, as lovely as that is, is not going to get you there. Like you still have to do the work and that's when the crawling starts. So, t so this is, I think, what you do. And I don't think we've told people yet like what you actually do. I know that you host a podcast and I said that, but can you talk about how you help women understand this? Yeah, 100%. I believe that a big part of my calling here is to sit with women and listen. And when I listen to a woman, I listen to what she is afraid of. I listen to the things that she struggles with. And she tells me this in words, but also I believe that intuitively I listen in a deeper way and I help her discover what her purpose is. I don't know what that is. She knows what it is. But when I'm coaching someone, what I'm doing is I'm listening in such a way that helps them understand themselves mm -hmm. and I'm reflecting that back to them. And then once we have clarity around our inner wisdom and our inner voice and are beginning to understand purpose, then we can move into action. And again, I'm not in the job. My job is not telling someone what to do. 
my job is to support someone in understanding what they need to do. And that understanding comes from listening to our inner voice. So I'm, you know, a facilitator, if you will. Like I just help people get connected. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're so disconnected because of how we live in this world and because of the things that we're not doing that we need reminders and we need to be taught ways to connect. And so I help women by giving them really, you know, very clear steps to connect with their voice, journaling, meditating, really specific ways of journaling. And I think that that is really my role. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it, like I said, I'm a facilitator. I'm pulling this out of someone, but it's all there. You don't necessarily need me to help you do that, but it may be faster if you... Well, this, this point that you just brought up, I'm, I'm really glad you said that because I think that the role of coach is confusing to people. Like, why do I need a coach? And I meet a lot of women who are like, I sh they should on themselves, right? Like, I should be able to do this by myself. I should already know. I should be able to find this on Google. And so they're, they're resistant to hiring a coach. And the other kind of person that I meet is, I want you to tell me what to do. Tell me exactly the steps to take. And what's right for one client is not right for another client. And it's not right for me, what might be right for you. So there's, there's no time at all that a coach should be telling you what you should be doing, right? 100%. So there's these, there's these two people who want you to tell them what to do. And then there's the other people who don't want to hire a coach because they feel like they already should know what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of confusing for people to know when it's time to hire a coach. It, it is. And I think, like, 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 let's talk about the person who feels like they should be able to figure it all out. Yes. We are all, we all have everything that we need to figure mm -hmm. it out. But you know what? Sometimes that's really, really difficult, especially if you have kids mm -hmm. or you're married and you're married and or you have a house to take care of, you have other responsibilities. You know, it, it, we have a lot going on. And just because we know how to do something doesn't make it easy to do those things. And when you hire someone to support you in that and to hold space for you and to hold you accountable mm -hmm. for those things that you say you're going to do, all of a sudden you have a partner, not a partner that's doing the work for you or telling you what to do, but a partner that is supporting you and that is cheering you on and that is reminding you, remember what you said you were born to do? Yes. Don't forget. Don't forget. Because it's easy to forget in, I think, all of the things that we do. And I know that you have a coach. I have worked with coaches before mm -hmm. and feel like it, it has been the, some of the most valuable work that I've done. Because also when you're sitting with someone who is a coach, who is listening and reflecting back to you, mm -hmm. you begin to see the things that are holding you back in a way that's sometimes difficult when you're trying to just do it all yourself. And so I, I really, really think that any woman who thinks that they can do it all, sure you can. You don't have to. Yes. Reminder, it's not required. It's not required to do it all yourself. And it's not going to make that achievement any less of an achievement because you've asked for help. In fact, you're, it's going to be more, I think. So that's the one kind of woman. The other kind of woman, I think what we're talking about is a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's, and I'm sure you do this in your own coaching business. You, you work on different things with different people. So coaching is not a one size fits all kind of thing. Right. So that's the lovely thing about working with an intuitive coach is you're really going to get exactly what is meant for you. And maybe that's working on confidence. Maybe that's working on believing that you are worthy now. I find that so many women think, well, I'm going to be good enough when I lose 40 pounds and when I have, you know, started my podcast and when I've written my book and when my kids, you know, are functioning adult <laughs> and all of the things. And I think that we have to understand that we are worthy right this minute before any of that happens. There's no, nothing that we can do or haven't done that comes into that formula. It's not a plus or minus. There's two things there that I would love to add on to, and I hope I remember what they are. Number one, when you lose the 40 pounds, if you haven't dealt with the worthiness issue, you're going to get to the 40 pounds gone, and you're still not going to like yourself. You're still not going to like what you see in the mirror. You're still dealing with the same brain junk. 100%. 
100% though. I, I believe that, that, and I know that to be true. Like I've seen that happen where then, then you lose a 40 pounds and you're like, um, okay, well what's next? Yes. It's like never I, enough, right? Right. My, I feel like the first probably 38 years of my life, I would get to the thing that I thought was going to be it. And then I would be like, oh, I feel the same. I remember you talking about this on your podcast. You said you got to the end of your marathon or your triathlon, I think it was, and you crossed the finish line and you maybe gave yourself a second to pat yourself on the back and then it was, and what's next? Oh my gosh, yeah. I, in fact, I can remember clearly, this was actually the very last triathlon that I ever did. Um, which was many years ago. It was a half Ironman. And my goal that whole summer had been, I want to do it faster than six hours. Like that was my goal. And I don't even know what that meant, like where I got that or anything. And the last race, I crossed the finish line and I looked at my stopwatch and you know what it said? 6.01. Oh, bastard. And I was disappointed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> disappointed. And disappoint. I had just ran a race that took me six hours mm -hmm. and I was disappointed. And in that moment, I didn't have the tools to be able to figure this out. But much later I looked back at that and I was like, one minute. Right. What was that about? Like I was defining my worth on one minute mm -hmm. that could have been, you know, affected by any sort of outside circumstance, had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with my worthiness or how good of an athlete I was or how hard I had trained. I was defining myself by one minute. And that's when I said, you know, like that is enough. I am not doing this anymore. It is not worth it to feel this way because I am good enough right now. It's like um, what I tell my clients is you're, you're going to be ready for a coach when you're sick of your own bullshit. And in that moment, you were sick of your own bullshit. You were like, no, no more of this. Yes. No more measuring myself by this one minute versus mm -hmm. the six hours, right? Yeah. Oh. And you know, maybe it's, maybe it's 10 pounds. Maybe it's $10,000. I mean, it, your one minute could be lots and lots of things. Yes, I but love I that. think that we all have that one minute mm -hmm. that, that like sticks in our craw and is like, what? Come on. And I just believe that we need to let that go mm -hmm. and really take into account who we are. We are worthy, not because of what we have done or what we haven't done. We're worthy because we are here. Yes. Because we're breathing. Like that is the only prerequisite. And when I really started to embrace that in my life, that's when, number one, I stopped shooting all over myself, right? Because I didn't have Amen. to do the things anymore to prove to myself or to other people that I was good enough. I didn't have to do that. And number two, it's when I started getting very clear about what I wanted to be doing what I wanted to bring into life, into this world, how I wanted to support people. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I don't really like doing that thing. Mm -hmm. Why was I even doing that? Because and I thought I had to. Let's talk about that a little bit because one of, the, one of my favorite things about you is you are a true multi-potential light. You are a creative woman who does a little of this and a little of this and a little of this. And very recently you and I were talking about the integration of it all mm -hmm. versus keeping them in separate silos and containerizing them. Yeah. This is a huge part for me. Can we talk about this? Because that moment where you were like, I'm this and I'm this and I'm this and I'm this, and you saw like the thread through all of them, that was very freeing for you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about 100%. what that was like? Yeah. I, well, just to give you guys a little bit of background, like I said, I'm a professional musician. Mm -hmm. I teach. I play professionally in the professional orchestra here in Syracuse. I work for the symphony several hours a week during doing marketing and fundraising. And that's something that I love doing. I do my coaching business. I have my podcast. Oh, and by the way, I have two teenage boys. Oh, them. <laughs> Are you married too by any chance? I am. <laughs> oh, him. Yes. And I have a dog. She's my favorite. Don't I was going to say, she trumps everybody else. <laughs> totally, 100%. And, 
And I, oh, and I sell beauty counters. Oh, that's right. That's, that's the other thing. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. And so like, I was really, I, I was struggling. Like, how can I pull all of these things together and create my brand? Mm -hmm. And how can I connect all of them? And I was kind of living like these many lives where none of the parts of this part of my life touched this part of my life. And I just, I don't know, not intentionally kept it separate. It just seemed easier. Like it should be. Like it should or, be. Yeah. yeah. Or like there's something wrong with me that I do all of these things and that's confusing yes. and too difficult for people to understand. And I, I had this understand, like it's just a breakthrough of like, if I'm really talking about my brand, Kelly Covert, I have to talk about all of these things mm -hmm. because that is what I do. And I don't want to do only one of them full time. That has never been my goal. And I've been very clear on that. I don't want to give up any of those things. And because I have made that decision, I have to also honor what that means about my results in any one given area. Mm, this was um, a really important piece because I really want people to listen here. I remember sitting at the lake and you being like, this should be this, this should be that. And this, this what you're about to reveal is a, is a big deal. It's a really big deal because we get a lot of information, I think, especially as creatives, especially as people who want to have their own business of what successful looks like. Mm -hmm. Successful means I'm making six figures. How many times have you heard that? Oh my God. I will teach you how to make six figures in the next year. And you know, we get a lot of messaging about what things should be, what, what qualifies you to be successful. And I would create these goals every year for my business, for my coaching business, and I would not hit them. And I would feel like disappointed and I would feel mad at myself, feel like I didn't follow through, that I was not good enough. And when I got really clear on the fact that I am not spending enough time on my business to generate that much revenue. And that's just reality. But you didn't want to spend more time than Correct. that. I didn't want to spend more time than that. And so, and so I had to adjust what I expected my results to be. Yes. Yes. So much. Yes. So, and it was, it was so freeing Jen, mm -hmm. because all of a sudden I was like, Oh, I don't have to make six figures in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. And the next step for me was to focus more on impact than on revenue. Mm -hmm. Because when I focus on revenue, I get stuck in that should place. And that's my personality. I think that there's a lot of parts of my personality that wants to do things right. Like I want to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. And that means it has to be like X, Y, Z, all straight in a row. And that conflicts with the part of my personality that wants to do many, many things. I think for female entrepreneurs, especially heart-centered, creative female entrepreneurs, that we need to let go of this belief that there is a right way. Oh, one that is absolute bullshit. And I, I have told this story many times where my husband is a business coach. And in my first business... I kept thinking, why isn't this right yet? Why aren't we making enough money? Why am I working so hard? What is the ingredient in the recipe that I don't have? Because I really thought there was one right way to do things. And I would look at him and I would, I would look to him to say, what are we missing? What are we missing? And he kept telling me, there's no recipe. You're, you're, once you can let go of that, then you're free to figure it out for yourself. Yes. But if that is one thing that I hope people take away from this interview with you is there is no one right way. It's what do you want it to look like? And the right way is not going to come from somebody else. Yes. It's going to come from you. Like Jen's right way, mm -hmm. and maybe right is not the word, Jen's successful way is not my successful way, is not Mary's successful way, is not Patty's successful way, right? Like, right. we have to understand that the formula that works for someone is not necessarily going to work for us. And that doesn't mean to stop learning or to stop 
you know, looking at what other people are doing, although that might be a good thing to do for a moment. Talk about your uh, detox that you did. Yeah. So this, I mean, and this is really recent for me that I made this discovery of like, I, I need to honor who I want to be Mm -hmm. instead of honor what I want to be meaning successful, Mm -hmm. right? I need to honor who I want to be. And so in order to do that, I unsubscribed from all of the newsletters I was getting. I stopped listening to all of the business and marketing podcasts that I usually listen to. I unfollowed probably 200 people I was following on Instagram. And these are even people that I know Mm -hmm. or coaches that I've worked with before because I really felt like I need to honor my own wisdom. And for me, the best way to do that was to fast from other people's wisdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a student and I've been learning my whole life and you know, I feel like the, the solution to everything is to read a book about it. (laughs) And so I've read all of the books and there comes a time where you just have to put the book down and you have to trust that your wisdom is there Mm -hmm. and that it's going to lead you in the right way, even if it feels different than how someone else is doing it. Right. I think that this goes back to the tools you were talking about in the very beginning, the journaling that you have your clients do, the meditation, the just being you know, in, Mm -hmm. in your own body and letting the intuition bubble up. I think that you really need those tools in order for this part to work. 100%. And I think what those tools allow you to do is they allow you to get to know who you are. Yes. They allow you to get to know the things that trigger you, the things that frustrate you, your default kind of tendencies. Mm -hmm. So you can start to, you know, unpack all of that and realize you don't always have to respond in the same way that you always have. You know, like that's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that our personalities are set. I really believe that as we come to know more about who we are, we can choose who we want to be. You know, I used to be a rule follower, you know, like I, I got, I got straight A's and I did everything right. And, and I, I like did not break rules. It made me very uncomfortable. And as I've gotten older, I've embraced the part of me that craves being the rebel, that craves breaking the rules, that craves being a bad girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the part of me that like when I was in college, I did not have fun in college. You know why? Because I, I couldn't allow myself to, to let, let go of that. And so as I've gotten older and understood that about myself and about where that came from, from my past, from things that happened or whatever, I can release that. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that that doesn't define me and I am allowed to change. I love that. A lot of people don't give themselves the grace to allow themselves to change. I I just actually recently did a podcast on this exact topic where we get to a certain age and we think we should have, I don't know, ripened by now. Like that's it. It's just, that's as good as it gets. And I think that when we get to that place where we're like, meh, everything kind of feels meh, or we're feeling like a little itchy in our body and we know we want something different. That's where an evolving is about to happen. And -hmm. you need to give yourself this grace that you're talking about to know that something new is coming and it's okay even if the people in your life don't like it or roll their eyes at you or tell mm-hmm. you you can't do it. And again, mm-hmm. I want to go back to that's a moment where you might need somebody in your corner to help you get through that new evolving that's going to happen. Yeah, I call it friction. Like mm-hmm. when I start to feel friction, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we can respond to that friction in a couple of ways. We can go away from it. Like, no, I don't want to feel like that. Or we can go deeper into it and understand that it's just telling us something. It's just giving us information. And yes, it's uncomfortable. But if we listen to what the information is, then we're going to find our way through it onto something, you know, at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. Like, God forbid I ever get to a moment in my life where I feel like I'm done. (laughs) Like, shoot me now. That's when they're going to put you in the casket. Yeah. I know. Jen, promise me you will. I'm your first girl. I'm your girl. You know it. I say that. I say that to my musician friends a lot too. Um, I feel like 
I know quite a few older musicians who just feel like they're like, oh, we're playing Brahms this week. I've done it 10 times. Mm -hmm. And it's lost its magic Mm -hmm. and it's lost what it was about that that made them go to it in the first place. You don't choose music because, you know, you're going to make a lot of money. (laughs) Right. You choose it because it calls you because yeah. you, you cannot choose something else. And I, I say the same thing, you know, when there comes a day when I'm on that stage and I'm not feeling moved mm-hmm. by what I'm doing, I need to quit that day. It's, it's a beginner mindset that I call it. So like, it's yes. the difference between going to the Brahms and saying, oh, I've done this a thousand times. I can do this in my sleep versus coming to it and asking your brain, what, what new thing can I get out of this today? How can this excite me today? And if you ask your brain those good questions, it comes up with answers. It's mm-hmm. designed to do that. Or you can just forget everything you've done and then it's always like Yes, new. and then I it's always new. Strategy too. Like your brain's like an etch a sketch. You just shake it a little yeah. and everything's oh. cleared out. <laughs> 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 Kelly, I want to thank you for all of this really amazing insight because there's so many creative women out there who maybe don't see themselves as creatives and maybe they don't see themselves as possibly bringing their ideas to life. But I think that you show people that you can have a lot going on and it doesn't need to overwhelm you. It doesn't need to rule you. I, I look at you and you are in charge of your life. Most days. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> life, life gets lifey, but you are making the decisions. You're driving your life. It's not the other way around. And I think Correct. that more women can bring their goals to life, make their ideas a reality, if they could take on some of the perspective that you've got about worthiness and how they approach who they are and how they approach what they want. So thank you so much for that perspective today. I know that people can listen to your podcast for free, right? Totally. Tell us, about, tell us about your podcast. So my podcast is In Her Voice, and it's sometimes solo episodes where I'm just riffing on the things that my inner voice is telling me to talk about or the things that are going on in my life. And I feel that whenever I'm called to put something out there solo on the podcast, that it's for someone, mm-hmm. um, which I love. And then so I also, you think it will, uh, it's like, it's going to land on the right ears. The ears oh, that yeah. Hear it. yeah. The person who needs to hear that will hear it. And it's usually more than one person. And I want to stop you there because I know a lot of women want to create a podcast and they tell themselves, nobody wants to hear it. And what you're saying is do it anyway, because it's going to land on the ears that need to hear it. Not only don't think about that someone doesn't want it, someone needs it. Like maybe that one podcast that you put out there is the reason that you are here on this earth. And if you don't do that thing, you're missing out on that. Like, to, like I don't want to miss out on a single thing that I was meant to do here. That's what I'm most passionate about. Like all of it, like knowing that I don't have to know every single little thing. But when I'm listening to my inner voice and I'm being who I am meant to be in this world, that that is my purpose. So, and I interview women too about the same thing, asking them, how do you listen to your inner voice? How do you find the courage to do the things that you've done? Mm -hmm. What are the tools that you use? What are the strategies that you use? Mm -hmm. So lots of different kinds of women, some business women, some not, um, therapists, healers, you know, yoga teachers, all, all the whole spectrum. And they share their wisdom, which I love to just sit under the voice of another woman Mm. as she shares her inner voice. It's very, very powerful. And you can listen to that anywhere that you listen to podcasts, Apple podcasts, iHeartRadio, all of the things, or you can get it on my website at kellycovert.com. I'll put the links to that in the comments. And how can people work with you if they're looking to bring their voice to life and they need a coach to sit with them and do all the things that you say that you do? I would say the best way to talk about it would be to talk with me about it in a discovery call. And I'll give you the link for that too. It's on my website. And I don't know when this is coming out. So I will put this out here that I'm doing a free five-day journaling challenge starting on January 14th all about what I like to call inspired potential. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I feel that women like us who are natural overachievers, who work ourselves to the bone, (laughs) sometimes potential can weigh heavy. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about a new way of thinking of potential that really opens us up to our purpose. This is up to who we are supposed to be. Is this an, I've never heard you do this before. This is new content. It's new. Mm -hmm. Yay. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this has all come from my whole integration process Mm -hmm. as I've discovered um, the idea of integration, like realizing that what I just said, like that potential is about being who you are Mm -hmm. and not about like crossing off the things on your list. Thank you so much, Kelly. This is, there's so much to think about here and it's also very inspiring and I think it's motivating that people can take action and maybe that action is kind of an inaction, right? Like a sitting with yeah. or writing or about. Back. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so, so, so sometimes that is the action we need to take. Mm-hmm. 100%. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you, Kelly. This was fun. fun. And plus, I love talking to you. Thank I know. You so much. <laughs> right. Thanks, Kelly. Doesn't Kelly have the most lovely voice? She's just the perfect person to be hosting a podcast. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. Kelly's voice is so lovely. And when I when I did my podcast, I was like, my voice isn't as nice as Kelly's. I have this raspy voice. I have these nodules on my vocal cords. Nobody will want to hear me. And that was a big story I had that kept me from doing a podcast for a long time. So I wonder if you have a similar story, which of course equals resistance that's keeping you from doing something. So here I am doing the podcast despite my raspy voice. Uh, there, There it was. Did you hear it? So I wonder what you can take away from listening to Kelly. And I'd also really love for you to listen to her podcast because she's just taught me a lot about moving out of perfection and into integrity with myself and doing things anyway, even though they're hard. I hope you found this podcast interview helpful. As always, if you want to see any of my podcast interviews, they're always live on YouTube. You can watch them on YouTube or Facebook Live. Sorry, that's what I meant. And um, there I am, not being perfect again, but doing this anyway, just like you can. And next month, I'm talking about how doubt steals our time and doubt keeps us from moving toward our goals. Remember that if you are ready to start moving into action, start moving into focus, start moving into productivity, that my online group is likely a great place for you. I would love to chat with you. So go to www.jenliddy.com. There you can download a freebie about how to gain more time, but you can also learn about the online coaching group I have for creative women. The women in there are doing things that they didn't even think they could do three months ago. So check it out or let's get on a call, but I know that you can have the thing you want. And I'm here when you're ready to take that step and be courageous and invest time and energy and money into yourself. I'll see you in April. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the idea space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.